Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we have a cool little project to do. It's a social media accordion slider and it's built with pure CSS. Okay, well, of course, HTML as well, but there's no JavaScript and we have some really cool animations here. If we hover over each of the social media icons, you'll see that it kind of just opens up and gives us the title, gives us a little blurb, changes the color, makes the icon bigger. So I, th I thought this was a really cool project. Now, I got the idea for this from another code pen that I saw by, I don't, I'm probably going to butcher this name, but it's by Aisha uh, and, and Grainy. And you can see it's basically the same thing, but she used SAS and Compass, and it's just a lot more complicated than I thought it needed to be. Even if we look at the compiled CSS, um, it's just way more than I wanted to basically just redo it and simplify it and create it as a, a tutorial. And then also you'll see that it's just it's not responsive at all. It's not responsive at all. So I decided to add some responsiveness to it. So once we get to a certain point, you'll see it'll change. This is basically for like tablets. Um, and then if we go down to a smaller size for smartphones, you'll see that it looks good as well. Now, if you want to tweak it a little bit and make it maybe slide down and out, um, you can do that. I just didn't really have the time for that. But um, I couldn't figure out a way to have it still have this type of effect. And, you know, on small screens, it's just not um, you would have to make it open vertically or something like that but I did want to give credit to Aisha I think that's that's how you pronounce her name and I will put the link to to her um, her uh, what is this code pen in the description because I did I didn't want to just kind of copy it and not give her any credit for it all right and I'll kind of explain things as we go along we're going to use CSS transitions um, so hopefully you guys enjoy this project and let's get started all right, so if you want to follow along with me, there's a couple things that you need to do to get set up and very easy. You just need to create two files, one index.html, one style.css. These are completely empty and I have them in a folder called social accordion. And then you're also going to need two font files, which are the icons, the social icons that we're using. This is where they come from. So this is called genericons or gener icons. And these two files we're going to implement within the CSS so that we can add those those social media icons. And these these genera icons, these fonts, these were used in one of the, the default WordPress themes, I believe. All right. So there will be a, a link in the description to download those two font files. All right. So let's get started here. So in the HTML, we're going to put in our boilerplate with Emmet. I'm going to close up the sidebar here. And let's change the title to, we'll say, well, let's just say follow me on social media. Now, this isn't something you would just deploy as is. It's basically a widget that you would you would integrate into a, uh, your your existing website or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and link the, C the CSS file. So style dot CSS. And then in the body, we're going to have a container. And in the container, we'll have a header with an H1. And we'll, again, we'll just say, follow me on social media. And under the header, we're going to go ahead and put a UL with a class of accordion. So basically, if we look at the, the final project here, each one of these are their list items okay and they're going to have a class of tab and then this whole box right here that you see the outline is the accordion okay the ul with the accordion class so let's create an li with the class of tab and inside here we basically want two divs so the first is going to be it's going to be a div with the class of social and it's going to have a class of whatever that current uh whatever that um network is so this will be YouTube I want YouTube to be the first one okay <clears throat> and inside here we're just gonna have a link to um, to whatever your your YouTube link is so I'm just gonna put mine okay uh, and let's let's add a target here as well so that it opens up on a separate tab. And then here we'll just say YouTube. This text actually isn't going to show. 
<clears throat> um, the way that we're going to insert the icons is this a tag right here. We're going to choose we're going to use the before and after pseudo elements in CSS3. And if if you've never used those before, they're basically used to to add content through CSS. And that's how we're going to insert the icons. OK, so we're going to we're going to use um, social a after and social a before to put basically both versions of these icons here and then we're going to add some transitions. All right. Now I tried to make it I may tried to make the code as simple as possible. Um, if you look at the version that I used to create this with as a reference, it's it's much harder to understand. That's what I like to do is kind of dumb things down for people that are just getting into like CSS3 and transitions and stuff like that. All right. So next thing we're going to do is under this div we're going to have a, a div with the class of content and that's where the the header and the paragraph are going to go or the heading so it'll be an h1 that says youtube and for the paragraph i'm just going to say follow me on youtube for uh we'll say for tutorials on the latest development technologies. So what I'll do is just create this first list item, this first tab, and then just paste the rest in and go over it. But if I save this and we take a look, <clears throat> by the way, I'm using live server for VS code. That's why you can see my my local host up here, but you can just open up the index HTML file and that's fine. So like I said, I'm going to grab the rest and paste them in and then I'll go over them. They're basically the same thing, just different social networks so let me paste this in right under the li and i'll go i'll just scroll through it you guys can either copy it or you can get it from the source code in the description but basically under the youtube we have another li with the class of tab a div with the class of social again and then twitter and the twitter link and then the content with the h1 and the paragraph Okay, the next one is Facebook, same thing, LI with the class of tab. Next one is LinkedIn, next one's Instagram, and next one is GitHub. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save that, and it looks absolutely horrendous, but we will fix that with CSS. Okay, so that's it for the HTML, very, very simple. So let's move on to style.css, and we're going to start off here by just creating a reset. So we're going to basically say everything should have a margin of zero. We want to zero out the margin and the padding. Uh, padding <clears throat> zero, and let's also say border zero. All right, so if we save that, everything gets squished together because there's no longer any margin or padding. And then for the body, we're going to add a background color of almost black 222 in hexadecimal and let's say font family will do Arial Helvetica sans serif save that <clears throat> now to use these generic icons or whatever it's called gen gender icons uh, we need to create a font face so we're going to say at font face and give it a font family which will be Jenner icons and whoops, that should be a semicolon. Now it needs a source, which will be two, uh, the two files that you downloaded. So we need to wrap it in a URL. So we'll say URL and then point to fonts, the fonts folder, and then the name of the icons. So the first one is going to be, if we look at this here, it's going to be the W O F F file so in here close that up let's put that file name which is gender icons dash uh, what is it regular dash web font and then right after this closing parentheses we're going to say format and the format is going to be w o f f OK, then we're going to put a comma and we want the other file, which is the true type font. So we're going to do fonts slash gender icons dash regular dash web font. Uh, and the extension for that is EOT. 
and then we want to do again format and the format for that is going to be true type okay and that's it so now we should be able to use gender icons as a font family when we want to insert those social media icons okay so let's move on uh, next thing we're going to do is the container class which is just going to have a margin uh, top and bottom will say 50 pixels left and right will be auto push it to the middle and then let's give it a width of 90 percent and we'll save um, I spelled that wrong okay so now you can see it's pushed to the middle we have a little margin on the top um, so next thing we're gonna do is this header right here so it's in a HTML5 header tag and then an h1 and I just want to change the color of that to white I want to set a margin bottom to 10 pixels and a text align to center okay next thing we're gonna do is the accordion and as I said before the accordion is this box the whole box you see here so we're gonna add those styles Okay, so we'll say background. Background is going to be slightly lighter than the body background, which is going to be 333. Okay, the width is going to be 100% of its container, but it's going to have a min width of 800 pixels. Okay, because it needs to fit everything in here that is expanded. Okay, and if you were to add more here, you would probably have to expand this in order for these to fit. Okay, and if you were to take some out, like if you only wanted the first three here, you could make this smaller if you wanted to. But we're going to say min width 800 pixels, and we want this displayed as a block level element. Of course, we don't want any bullet points, so we want to say list style type um, none square. And then let's set the overflow to hidden, so nothing breaks out of it let's set the height to 200 pixels now if I were to save this and take a look um, you'll see that we have the outline of the accordion I want to get rid of all the text though right now so what I'm gonna do is set the font size to zero and then we're gonna add the fonts the font size of the content later on <clears throat> okay so next thing we want to do here is work on the tab class okay and each one of these as I said is a tab so let's add in tab and we want these displayed as an inline block okay they should be side by side uh, background color so background color will be slightly lighter than the accordion so 444 and let's do a border right of 333 three, three, solid uh, one pixel okay the width of each one will be 80 pixels and the height should be the same as the uh, accordion did I put I didn't put oh yeah I did yeah 200 pixels so it should also be 200 pixels um, let's see what else we want the overflow to be hidden And let's see, we want this to be position relative. And let's add a margin zero. And let's save that. And now, as you can see, we have these 80 pixel wide boxes. Okay. Um, what we want to happen when we hover over one of these, we want it to basically go into 450 pixels wide. So if I go down here and I say dot tab hover, um, we want to change the width to 450 pixels. Now if I hover over one, you'll see it extends. Each one will extend to 450. Now I don't want it to just pop into 450 pixels. I want it to smoothly animate to that size like this. And the way that we do that is by using a CSS transition. Okay, transitions are, are pretty easy to understand. It's basically just taking 
the, the changing of the property, such as the width, and setting a time to it. So we could say we want it to take a half a second or one second to get to that width from this width. And that will give it that animation effect, that stretching. All right, so what, all we need to do to achieve that is to add a transition into the tab class right here. And this takes in a couple things. We actually want to transition everything. So we'll say all and we'll say we want it to take 0.5 seconds. So a half a second. The type of transition or the effect is going to be ease in out. And then the delay, we're going to just do 0.1 seconds. OK, so now if I save that and I hover over one of these, now you'll see it nicely just changes. It doesn't just snap to 450 pixels. It, it, it slides open, which is what we want. All right, so now let's work on the content, which is this part here, this white part with the text, because right now it's just blank. So let's target. And by the way, if if I were to remove this font size zero, you can see that the, all the text is still there. But we want to keep that there because we want to just target each item in the content. So we'll say tab content H1. And we're going to set a font size here of, let's say, two point. I'm going to use rem units. So we'll say 2.5 rem. And then let's just add a margin bottom of uh, 10 pixels. Get rid of that. So if I save that, uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't add the content itself. So right above this, we want just the content class. We want to do uh, a few things here. One, we want the background to be white. OK, uh, we also want the width to be 360 pixels. So right now, let's see, you know what? I'm going to comment this out for now. All right, so the reason that it's not showing white is because it also needs a height. So the height is going to be the same as the accordion, which is 200, uh, 200 pixels. So now you'll see it's white, but it's it's not giving us what the effect we want. We want them to be gray and then have this side be white. So we can achieve that by just giving it a margin left. So the content will be pushed to the left 80 pixels. Now it's gray and and now you can see when we open it, it's then white. OK, um, let's see. We also want to do some uh, we want to position it relative. We want to add some padding to the content or around the content. So we'll say 50 on the top. Uh, let's see, we'll do 0, 0, 15 on the left and I think that's it so now we can uncomment this and save and there we go okay so now we want the the paragraph that's under it we're gonna target that I'll just copy this here and we'll change this to instead of h1 we'll target the paragraph the font size I'm going to do 0 0.85 rem and let's see, we don't need this. Let's do a line height of 1.4 rem and then we're, we also want to do a, uh, some padding on the right of 30 pixels and we'll save and there we go. So that looks good. Now we're going to start on this part, which is going to be the icons. Now we're going to insert the icons before and after the a tag, OK, which is this right here inside the social class, the eight. So we're going to target social a colon before and colon after. OK, that's how we define pseudo pseudo elements is just the colon and then whatever it is. So in this case, before and after. So to add a specific icon, let's say add 
icon so let's say for the YouTube icon we want to target the YouTube class and then the a tag within it and then before okay we also want to put it after because there's basically two icons we have the one that displays and then when we hover it we have that one as well okay so we want to do both before and after so YouTube a after now to insert the icon <clears throat> or to insert anything you use content okay so we could put whatever we want in here what we want though is the code for the specific icon the generic generic <laughs> generic icons or whatever the hell whatever the hell it's called has codes for certain icons just like font awesome and other icon libraries so the one for YouTube is f213 so we want to insert the, the YouTube icon before and after that a tag which is this right here okay so down here we want the after one which is the one that w which we hover over we want the background to be red okay so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say dot YouTube a after and we're going to set the background color to red which is going to be ff0000 and save that and we're not going to see anything just yet because we have some styling to do to the a tag in general not just youtube a we, we need to style social a before and after as well all right but this is how we add the icons so for it to show up again like i said we're going to have to target social ah. so social a before and social a after so we want to set a width of 80 pixels and we want to set a height of the accordion which is 200 pixels we want it to position absolute because it's basically like an overlay and we're gonna just do text indent zero we're gonna do padding from the top we want the icon to be kind of like in the middle so padding top 90 pixels and then we're also gonna do some padding on the left which will be 25 pixels we want this displayed as a block and for the font this is where we implement the uh, gender icons font so it's going to be a normal font weight it's going to be 30 pixels and the font type will be that generic icon gener generic and then the color we want to be white all right, so if I save that, all right, that's not showing up for some reason. I probably misspelled it somewhere. Let's look at the font face here. Regular dash web font. Hmm. Oh, I didn't put the extension here. It should be dot W O F F. There we go. Sorry about that. So now you can see it's red by default, which we don't want. We want it to be gray, and then the transition that we're going to add, that will bring in the red. So to make this gray, let's go back down here, and let's go after what we just did. And we just want to target now social A after. Okay, we want to target that, and we want to set the font size. So the after is the red, right? Because we want that we want the red to be the bigger icon. So we're going to change the font size to 48 pixels. And then we also want to add padding dash left of 20 pixels, padding top of 80 pixels. So we're just positioning it because we made the icon bigger. So we want to change these values to these 
for the red version. And then finally, we want to do margin dash left 85. That's what's going to push it over and basically make it go away by default. So now if I save, if we go back now, it's gray. Okay, if I were to comment this out and save now, you'll see it's red. Okay, so that kind of pushes it pushes it over. Now we want the effect of the this moving over and the red one moving in. Okay, the after moving in and the before moving over. So we need to add a transition into here. So we're going to say transition all. We'll say 0.4 seconds. E uh, let's do ease in out and let's say a delay of 0.1 seconds. Now that alone isn't going to do anything. We need to target the hover again. So let's go up to the tab hover. And instead of just tab hover, we want we want also want to add social and then a after. Okay. Uh, actually, let's do the before first. All right, so tab hover. Social a before now we want to basically push this over, so we're going to use margin left. And we're going to say negative 100 pixels, so this will move it over to the left. So if I save that now, you'll see that that icon is moving over to the left. 100 pixels so it's going outside of the accordion which is overflow hidden so we, we just can't see it now notice that it's not red and we're not seeing the other icons so all we have to do for that to work is we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll change this to after and set the margin left to just negative five pixels and save and now you can see that it comes in Okay, because we're setting the margin left of after to just negative five pixels, so it's bringing it back in. And without this transition that we added, if I were to get rid of that, you'll see it just kind of pops in. So that transition is very important, just like the other one for for this for the content. All right, I hope that I'm explaining this fairly well because it is it is kind of hard to explain, especially if you're new to CSS3 and transitions and all that stuff. All right, so I think we're good here. Um, next thing we're going to do is add the rest of the icons. So there's what six of them, so we can just copy this and we basically have to do this for every icon. So that'll be two, three, four, five, six. And we'll go up here. We're going to leave YouTube as the first one. The next one will be Twitter. So this is the first one that's YouTube and I'm just going to highlight this and do control D two times to to grab the, the next two and then say Twitter. Now the code for the Twitter icon is going to be uh, F202 and then we also want to change the color to be the branding of Twitter which is going to be 6 DC. 5DD. All right, and let's see. The next one is going to be uh, Facebook. So I'm going to just grab these, change these to Facebook. And the code for Facebook is F204. And we want to change the branding as well, the color to 3B5998. That'll give us that Facebook blue. All right. And then we want this one to be LinkedIn. And we're going to change the code here to F208. And then the color. So for the color, we're going to do 00A9CD. That'll give us that LinkedIn blue. And then for Instagram. We're going to do the code um, F215 and we're going to change the color here 
to uh, the Instagram green color, which will be 6DC993. And then finally, we want the GitHub. And the color for that, I'm sorry, the code for that is going to be 200. Okay, and, and there's references for the, the, the Jenner icons um, codes as well. Let me just see if I can find that actually. Unicodes, I guess, yeah. Unicode values. Yeah, see. Um, let's see, right here, yeah, Facebook. So we used what 204 I think we used that one. So this is a list if you guys want to use other icons, this is a good reference for those Unicode values. All right, so back to the color here. Uh, this is going to be 6 E5 494. So let's save and let's go back to ours and there we go. So it looks like it's working pretty good. And the next thing we need to do is make this responsive. Because right now, if I were to make this smaller, it just it, it doesn't work out. It's it's not responsive whatsoever. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add a couple media queries. So let's do at media. So this one is going to have a max width of 950 950 pixels and what that means if you guys aren't familiar with media queries is any styles that we put inside here they're only going to be in effect if the screen or the browser is 950 pixels or less all right so first thing i'm going to do is change the container width from 90 percent to 70 percent okay because I don't want it to spread. I mean, it's going to be pretty wide. 950 is pretty big, but we need that in order to, to fit this. Um, so we don't want the container to come all the way out here. We want it kind of, you know, pushed in a little more. So that's the container. Next thing we want to do is for the tabs. We want them to display as a block. Now, if I go ahead and save that, uh, actually, we're not going to see it difference unless I make this a little smaller there we go so since they're displayed block they're basically on top of each other and the only one we can see is YouTube because the accordion is 250 I'm sorry 200 pixels high and it's set to overflow hidden so we can't see anything under it all right so I'm gonna fix that in a second um, let's do a uh, tab with of 100 percent so now we can actually see the content and then let's also do a border bottom i want to kind of separate each one because they're going to be going vertically so we'll say border bottom three pixels three 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 solid all right so now let's target the accordion and the accordion we want to display as a block we want to set a minimum width of 450 pixels so if I save that you can see now it's a little shorter now if we want to be able to see the rest of them we want to change the height from 200 to auto and save and now we can see all of them okay now we have some weird effect going on here <clears throat> So we need to do two things. We need to add for the tab. I'm going to set the width to 85%. Okay, and then we need to target the hover and set the width of the tab to 100%. So let's say tab hover width. 100 percent uh let's see I'm still missing something here what did i do 
min width 450 tab oh i'm sorry it's not it's not the tab that should be 85 percent it's the content which is the white part so we want to just put in content there we go all right so that looks pretty good for for this screen size now when we start to get smaller around right here you'll see that it's no longer even on the sides and it just that doesn't look good so now we need to create another media query for smaller screens so this one we're going to do a max width of 680 pixels and we're just going to do a couple things here we want to set the container to be much wider so it's it's um, for 950 or less it's set to 95% we want to set it now I'm sorry it's set to 70% now we want to set it to 95% and almost take up the whole screen because it's such a small screen size and then we just want to take the accordion and we want to set the width of that to 100% and set the minimum width to 350 pixels okay so it should it shouldn't go any smaller than that and if I save now you can see that it fits all right so even on very small screens it looks good all right and then when we hit 950 or higher of course it goes back to the original All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this little project. I know it's not building like a, a full website or application or something like that. We're not using frameworks or anything special, but I think this stuff is important and I think it lacks on YouTube and, and just, just on the internet tutorials in general because this is all real life stuff that you're gonna be building um, as part of websites, part of, of applications and stuff. So it, it's, it's good to get a, a grasp on things like CSS transitions. So hopefully this helped you a little bit and you enjoyed it and that's it. I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you've been watching my videos for a while and you really like what I do and I've helped you out a lot, consider becoming a patron. Even for $1 per month, it pushes me to keep bringing you guys the best content I possibly can. There's reward tiers for discounts, free Udemy courses, personal support, and more. So check out the Patreon link in the description below for more info.